Good afternoon. Hope you guys are having a great day. It is Monday. The weekend has flown by and it is warmed up again. The humidity is bouncing back up here again in East Tennessee. And y'all, I'm still under the weather. It's really been a Monday. I've had to go back to the doctor again. Y'all, when it rains, it pours. And it's just kind of wearing me down a little bit. So that's my complaining for the day. So on another note, on a better, higher note, we're getting ready to go to the beach. So that is super exciting. We need a break. We so need a break. We're having a house seater come this week and they're gonna take care of all my stuff and stay here at the house. So I'm trying to prepare for that. I'm gonna go in and mark all my plants that they're gonna need to water this week and all that good stuff. Take care of the chickens and the flowers. Of course, there's not a whole lot to do with the flowers and in the garden we we've had plenty of rain so i don't think that's going to be an issue and there's still a chance of rain i'm seeing next week so hopefully that should be an easy part but yeah maybe picking tomatoes and okra and checking on the beans but i think they're still growing so they don't have to do anything with those so yeah Audrey, one of my husband's favorite succulents, she watches the weather. She's gonna try to give us a winter prediction for long. What kind of winter are we gonna have? What do you think? We're gonna get some snow this winter? I actually heard we're gonna have a wet, colder winter, maybe some possible snows. I think I heard from the farmers, I think the farmer's almanac is predicting like January to be pretty cold here and wet, so that could mean some snow here. Seth loves the snow. Now, my husband, on the other hand, is not a huge fan of snow. He's always run into some crazy stuff at work when snow hits, so that's kind of one of the reasons why he don't like it. Maybe when he's retired, he won't mind so much. But he has definitely got some stories to tell, and they're they're quite comical. Well, they weren't too comical for him at the time, but they're they're pretty comical now when we sit back and, and talk about them, especially at, at the dinner table. <laughs> He's going to write a book one day, and well, actually, he's working on it, um, about his career and stuff, and, and I'm sure they're going to be in the book. Check out my orchid. Oh, my. She's blooming another one. That one and that one. How gorgeous. And we've got a third one coming out. Awesome. She really likes it right here in the greenhouse, kind of in the middle section right here. Check out that low light plant. Pretty cool. It's called a gold, gold it's called a goldcrest falsa aurelia. It's got another name and I can't pronounce it. Digzogathixia elegatismia. Oh man. Let's just say pretty. <laughs> I can't speak that language. Sometimes I try, I don't even want to act like I know. That is hard to pronounce. Y'all, I'm from East Tennessee. We don't use them words, them big words. <laughs> oh, look at my husband's palm tree. It's got two new leaves coming out on it. One just opened up because you can see the ends of it kind of, they're not even opened all the way yet. My husband gets excited when he sees a new leaf. Now we got this one, this one last year at the beach. Actually these three right here. And they've done super good in the greenhouse. I'll turn this fan on before I head out of here because we don't want it hot. This vent fan keeps it cooled off in here. So I think I may do like a little tutorial of my greenhouse and kind of maybe if anybody's thinking about doing a greenhouse, just some things that I totally recommend. When we first started the idea of doing a greenhouse, you know, we weren't sure about everything to do and we had never had a greenhouse before. So, you know, having a greenhouse for a year, you learn a lot. A lot, you learn a lot of things that you didn't know and, and I'm sure there's some things that I can share with others that you know might have an idea of doing it or some, some things to do some things not to do so that might be coming up pretty soon um, I'm gonna head out here to my little wheelbarrow because I have some tomatoes in here that's got to be bagged up y'all I picked these last night cherry tomatoes from what one bed over there just full of them all the time I washed them last night, and we're going to go ahead and put them in a Ziploc bag and stick them in my tomato freezer. 
Look at that cherry tomato. That's a big one. Some of these cherry tomatoes that reseeded. I had cherry tomatoes last year in my raised beds, and those things volunteered, which you know means they've self-seeded from last year's seeds that had dropped into the soil. And I couldn't keep them out of my beds. They just wanted to keep coming back everywhere. I'd pull them out, they'd come back again. I'd pull them out, they'd come back again. So they'll probably be tomatoes on this property until the day I die, whether I want them here or not. Whoever lives here after us, they're gonna be blessed with tomatoes. They grow really good here. Y'all, I got two bags from last night. That's a pretty good haul for cherry tomatoes. Let's head down to the chickens. Oh, I think they've laid in the nesting box. Let's go check that out. Ooh. Holy cow, I've got so much pond shavings in there, I can't. Okay. Well, I didn't expect them wanting to lay in here, and I don't want to dump those pond shavings out, so let's just go inside the coop again. Chickens are pretty skittish now when something when I'm back here. I feel like something's been down here terrorizing them. Well, they've laid in here. I'm gonna terrorize this that I haven't stapled down yet. Laid in here. Hey there. Hey there, Polly. Hey, Miss Polly. Miss Polly Moo. Hello, sister. What's up? my pretty wanna dot so I think I'm gonna get some chicks maybe when I get back it's about time to to have some more chickens to grow out that way when these get to the point where they don't lay as much which they start declining as the years tick on I'll have some new fresh chickens that will lay really well Monday. Well, I was gonna say let's go check on the guys. Go tend to that in a little bit. Hear them in there. Spy on them. Let's eavesdrop on their conversation. Make sure they're not talking about me. What are you doing? Nice things. Show her your finger. <laughs> hey guys, welcome back to this old woodworking. Greenhouse woodworking. Greenhouse woodworking, Seaton and Sons. Seaton family. Yeah, nine and a half. I'm gonna start <laughs> calling it our nine and a half woodworking. Nine me. and a half. <laughs> Get it. So, working on the nightstands right now. I've got two sets of drawer runners in. Guys, these things are phenomenal. These are bloom door drawer slides, under mount drawer slides. Soft clothes. They are fantastic. Really easy to mount. Just kind of go right here, just like this. You just level them up and screw them in. Very simple to do. No issues at all. And so I'm gonna have a bigger drawer on the bottom. He's wanting a, the client's wanting a, some file, a file folder drawer in the base, in the bottom drawer, and then we'll just have just kind of a smaller drawer up top. But it'll pull out like this. And your file cabinet, your file folder will be right here. So that's what we're doing. Gotta get a piece, some white oak 
and get it milled up and, and glued out, glued together, and that's what the top's going to be. And I'm going to make the drawer faces out of, out of poplar. So it should be pretty nice when it's done. It's going to be heavy, I can tell you that. And then on top of this, Most I've got things a, are. <laughs> huh? Most things you make are. I know. Then I've got another one right here that I'm going to do the same thing to, and then we're going to build a hutch on top of it that's going to set the side, one on each side of the, the bed. Murphy best. It's going to look really nice on this Yeah. So. Sure is. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. All right. That's the update. Uh-oh. Juanita's gone. What are they doing with her? Oh. All right, y'all. I gotta pick a little okra in my holy cow insane garden down here. I don't even call this a garden down here. This is turned into a massive jungle that I don't go in because there could be snakes, creatures, bugs, ticks, bigfoots, I don't know. You name it, it could be in here. Thank goodness I put my okra on the outside so I can grab it but my gourds and everything are in there and one day i put my boots on said i was going to dive in and look at them but wasn't that brave yet so maybe i will at some point but yeah like i said y'all i'm putting weed fabric down we're putting garden fabric down and it is going to be beautiful next year that is the hope and dream i'm seeing so anyways we're going to go get some of that sometime this fall but in the meantime we'll pick some asokra Alright, time to pick a few maters.